Hey, what is going on everybody? It is Rob, aka The Diligent Dev, and welcome to this Cloud Firestore Triggers tutorial. In this tutorial, we're gonna cover things like automating the sending of push notifications and emails, syncing your data within Firestore, and also how to clean up your data in Firestore and in Firebase Storage. So without any further ado, let's jump over to the computer and get right into it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is head over to firebase.google.com. Go ahead and sign up for an account if you don't already have one. Once you've signed up, click go to console. We're going to create a new project. We'll call this Firebase Function Triggers. Hit continue. Hit continue again. Choose the default account. And hit continue. And once this is done creating the project, I'll be right back. Okay, so the project is set up successfully. So the next thing we're going to do is go to database. Up here at the top of the screen, we're going to click create database. We'll start it in test mode for now. We'll pick US Central. And once this is done provisioning, I'll be right back. Okay, so our database has been provisioned. The next thing we're going to do is click on storage. We're going to click on get started. Click next. Click done. And once this is done creating our default bucket, I'll be right back. Okay, so our Firebase storage bucket has been created successfully. And the next thing we're gonna to need to do is install the Firebase CLI. So I'm gonna to go to their docs and I'll leave a link to this in the description. And you can see we can install it through NPM, but before you install anything through NPM, you're gonna need Node.js. So if you don't already have that, go ahead and install it. And then we're gonna copy this command out of here. I'm gonna open a new terminal. I'm gonna paste it in and hit enter. And one caveat is if you're on a Mac, you'll have to put sudo in front of this command and type in your password so that it can be installed globally on your machine. And once this is done, I'll be right back. All right, so the Firebase CLI has installed successfully. The next thing we're gonna to need to do is run Firebase login. We'll hit yes. And then go ahead and log in to your Firebase account. And what this is gonna do is sync our CLI with our Firebase account. Okay, so now what I've done is created a blank folder on my desktop and opened it in Visual Studio Code. We'll go up top, we'll go to New Terminal, and we're gonna run the following command, Firebase init. It's gonna ask me if I'm in the root directory, and I'm gonna say yes. It's gonna ask me what features I wanna use. We're gonna use Firestore, Functions, and Storage. It's gonna ask me if I wanna use an existing project. I'm gonna say yes. I'm gonna go down to the Firebase functions triggers and hit enter. It's gonna ask me where I wanna store the Firestore roles. I'm just gonna hit enter for the default. It's gonna ask you where you wanna store the Firestore indexes, hit enter for default. What type of language we want to use. For this, we're gonna use JavaScript. Asks if we want to use ESLint, I'm gonna say yes. And then it's gonna ask if we wanna install our dependencies with NPM now, and I'm gonna say yes again. And once this is finished, I will be right back. Okay, so after all the dependencies were installed, it asked me what file I wanted to use for my storage rules, and we'll just use storage.rules, the default, you just hit enter there. And after that, it'll build out your whole project. So let's go ahead and take a look at the structure here. In our functions folder, we have node modules, so we can use any NPM packages we'd like in there. We have our linter rules, our git ignore, our index.js, where we'll be writing all of our triggers, our package.json, and this is where it stores all your dependencies that you'll need and scripts that you can run. We have some Firebase configuration folders, another git ignore outside of the functions folder. We have this firebase.json, which tells Firebase where all the roles and everything are stored. And if you ever wanted to change your file name, such as your Firestore roles, you could change it and then reference it here. Um, we have our indexes for Firestore, our Firestore roles, and our storage roles. Okay, so the only thing we're really gonna be concerned about in our project is this index.js file. And you'll see it gives you an example of Firebase functions call. So we'll go ahead and uncomment this and take a look at it. And you'll see it exports a function called hello world. It's an HTTP request. And on the request, it responds with hello from Firebase. For the purpose of this demo, we're not gonna be focusing on any HTTP requests. If you have any interest in that, I'll link a video on the screen where I create a REST API using Firebase functions. But for now, we're just gonna focus on triggers. Now, the first Cloud Firestore trigger we're gonna cover is on create. And this is a trigger that gets fired every single time a document is created in a specific collection inside of Firestore. Now, these are great for sending things like push notifications and maybe welcome emails when a user signs up. 
But for this tutorial, we're going to keep it very basic. And all we're going to do is after a user signs up, we're going to log it in a logging table where we would typically send something like an email. So in order to do this, we're going to come up here to the top and I'm going to say const admin equals require Firebase admin. And then we'll say admin dot initialize app. And then we'll set an instance of our fire store. So we'll say const db equals admin dot fire store. Now down here, we're going to go ahead and delete everything up to the exports. And we're going to say on user creates, and we'll set that equal to functions dot fire store dot documents. We will reference our users collection and then we'll put a forward slash and put user ID here. And that would enable us to be able to grab the user ID if we needed it. Then we'll say on create, we'll pass in a snapshot and context and set that equal to an arrow function. In order to grab the values that we've passed in on, on our creation of our document, we'll say const values equals snap dot data. And then this is typically where you'd send out like a push notification or an email. So we'll just put a comment out here and say, send email. But like I said, for this tutorial, we're just going to log this in a logging table. So we'll say DB dot collection. We'll reference the logging table and then we'll say add and we'll pass in an object with a description. And we'll set that equal to some string interpolation. So we'll use a back tick here and we'll say email was sent to user with username. We'll say dollar sign and wrap that in curly braces so that we can reference our values and say dot username. Now this needs to be an async function so that we can await this. So here we'll say await and up top here we'll say async. And we're going to go ahead and save that. And then here at the bottom, we'll run our command Firebase deploy dash dash only functions. And that will go ahead and deploy our functions to the cloud. And I'll be right back after that's finished. Okay, so as we can see here, our function deployed successfully. So what we're going to do now is hop over to Firebase. I'm going to start a collection. I'm going to call it users. And then we're going to throw some fields in here. We'll say username, set that equal to the diligent dev. We'll add a first name equal to diligent and a last name equal to dev. We're going to go ahead and save this. And then I'm going to give it a second for our cloud Firestore trigger to fire. And then we're going to reload the page. And now we see a login collection and in here it says a description of email was sent to user with username the diligent dev. So you can see on our document create it went ahead and fired that trigger and that's where you would send something like an email or a push notification out. So moving right along the next trigger we're going to cover is the on update trigger. Now one great thing about Firebase and NoSQL databases in general is that they scale really well. But the problem with them is that you'll have duplicate data in a lot of your different collections. So let's say that we have a new collection and we're going to call it reviews. And we're going to say that the username that left this specific review is the diligent dev. And then we'll say stars. He left five and contents is is great video. And we'll go ahead and save this. And this would be an example of something that where you would have duplicate data because you reference the username in your reviews collection, but you also have the username in your users collection. So when someone would go in and update their profile and change their username in the users collection, we would want that updated as well in the reviews collection. And I'm going to show you how to do that right now. So here we are back at our project. And since we're referencing the exact same collection, what I'm going to do is just copy this function and take it down here. We're going to change the function name to on user update. We're going to change this from on create to on update. 
we'll go ahead and delete everything that's inside of the function. We're gonna grab the new values. So we'll say const new values equals snap dot after dot data. We're gonna grab the previous values. So we'll say const previous values equals snap dot before dot data. And then we're gonna to check to see if the username has been changed. So we'll say if new values dot username does not equal previous values dot username. Then we're gonna go ahead and update our reviews collection. So in order to do this, we're gonna say const snapshots equals await db dot collection. We're gonna reference the reviews collection dot where username is equal to previous values dot username and then dot get. So what this does is returns all the reviews that have the old username. The next thing we're gonna do is say, let's update promises equal an empty array because we do not want to do an await inside of a loop. And we're gonna say snapshots dot for each, pass in the document. And then we're gonna say update promises dot push db dot collection going to reference the reviews collection. Then we're going to say dot doc, and we're going to pass doc dot ID. Then we're going to say updates, and we're going to pass in an object with username, and set that equal to new values dot username. And then outside of this for each, we're going to say await promise dot all and we're gonna pass in our update promises. And we're gonna go ahead and save that. And then down here at the bottom, we're gonna run our Firebase deploy dash dash only functions. And once this is complete, I'll be right back. Okay, so our function has been created successfully. So let's head back over to Firebase. You'll see here in the reviews, we have the username of the diligent dev. Let's say a user goes and updates their profile. Let's just change this to diligent dev and we'll hit update. We'll give it one second here and then we'll go back to our reviews collection. And as you can see, the username has updated. So if we go back to our users collection and we put the in front of it again and hit updates and go back to our reviews collection, you'll see that the username has also updated here. So as you can see, this is a great way to sync your duplicate data inside of your database. Okay, so the last Firestore trigger we're gonna cover is on delete. And this fires when a document is deleted. So what we're gonna do for this is we have a post collection here and you'll see that it's got some content, a title and some images. Now, when we delete this post out of this collection, wouldn't it be nice if it would go to our storage account and into this post bucket and also delete these posts? Well, this is what we're gonna cover right now. Okay, so under our on user update function, we're gonna write exports dot on post delete. And we're gonna set that equal to functions dot firestore dot documents. And we're gonna reference the posts collection and post ID. And then we're gonna say on delete and we're gonna pass in a snapshots and context and set that equal to an arrow function. At the top, we'll say const deleted post equals snap.data. And then we're gonna go ahead and delete our images. Now, in order to do that, we're gonna declare an empty array called delete promises, set that equal to an empty array. And then we're gonna say const bucket equals admin dot storage dot bucket. And then we're gonna say deleted post dot images dot for each. Pass in an image. And now we're gonna push into our deleted promises array. So we'll say deleted 
promises dot push bucket dot file pass in the image and then we'll say delete and then underneath our for each we'll just say await promise dot all delete promises and in order to have this await this we will have to make this an async function so we're going to go ahead and save everything and then we're going to run our command of firebase deploy dash dash only functions and once this is done running i will be right back so our firebase function has deployed successfully i'm back here at firebase i'm in the post collection i'm going to go ahead and delete this document i'm going to give it a second for the firestore trigger to execute we'll go to our storage we'll go into posts and you'll see that there are no files here any longer so that's going to go ahead and wrap up our Firestore Triggers tutorial. If you got any value out of this, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. It really helps out my channel. And until next time, happy coding.